en la piedra de abajo, en la pirámide de arriba. In the ages agua. below, the pyramid the above, Gabriel. putting John and the archangel Gabriel, and then John saying, speaking, preaching, among you is one whom you don't know. I baptize you with baptism unto repentance, but he that cometh after me shall baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. And there he then begins to bring them out into a bridge. He brings them out of the seventh age. They are there. Gabriel then, in that interlace, because he appeared to Zachariah, while John's, John's ministry was in Elizabeth's womb. That is, while he was speaking to Mary, he was already, because he says to her, and behold, your cousin Elizabeth is already six months along. In other words, it had been six months. There it was, well, a short time. Here we have to see all the time that it entails. He appears to her. He had already appeared to Zechariah, and while the archangel is speaking to Mary, who is the bride, John's ministry was already there, too. See? All that is in that time. Well, in that compact time, let's say. Gabriel comes and speaks the good tidings to Mary, which represents the church. Here, Gabriel is speaking the good tidings to the church bride, which Brother Branham had already brought her out of the seventh age. And I stand at the door and call, says Brother Branham, because he is outside. But the archangel Gabriel comes and gathers, takes out, makes that gathering of all that seed that came out of there from the denomination, from creeds, dogmas, and all that. He takes them out. They are all here. But then Gabriel leaves the scene just as he left the scene here. The door comes and makes the call to go up. But Gabriel is already out of the scene. Then comes the one of whom he spoke. Here it is, calling at the door. Come. Some start up and become part of that cornerstone. And what others do is that they turn back and lock themselves up again in the message that was already passed under what they thought it was and believed and they locked themselves again then there is no one left here when the promises and everything are fulfilled they are then in the seventh age which are the foolish and then it is that they see because of the manifestation of the third pool, which is for the bride, which is for the foolish, and everything. There they say, but wait, that is Christ, that is the angel of the covenant among us. They then go out again and fall into this breach. The door says to them, I don't know where you are from. Why does he say to them, I don't know where you are from? Because they are neither in the seventh age nor are in the cornerstone. They are in between. And since they are in between, they cannot be in, see? They cannot enter because the door is already closed. And then they are cast into the outer darkness, which is the great tribulation. And then Christ, already here, 30 to 40 days, takes his bride. But they remain in a neutral time. They belong neither to one side nor to the other. That is why those who are left from the seventh age of Brother Branham, automatically from the seventh age, they go straight to the cornerstone. Because if not, they would have to go through the same thing that those foolish ones are going to go through. They have to go to the Great Tribulation because then they are neither on one age nor on the other. So automatically they have to go right in receive the messenger, receive that stage of the third, because Brother Branham surely must have asked God, Lord, let the remaining group see your coming. And for sure, Joseph, at some point, is going to say, this is him. In other words, the fulfillment of what a minor prophet is, by saying, this is him, and this is the age, this is the fulfillment of what Daddy foreshadowed 
of what Brother Branham foreshadowed. With that, he already fulfills the promise of a minor prophet, and then he would come with his group to be those last ones that come in just barely where the spoken word, when it was spoken by Brother Branham, that is, that a distance removed the tumor. The church is healed of that disease that it has now. In other words, it is through the word of the anointed one of God of this time, of the manifestation of God, that healing will be spoken from there to that group at a distance. At a distance, why? Because we're in Latin America and the Caribbean. Let's say it in clearer words, from Puerto Rico will be spoken to the United States, to that group of Brother Branham, so that they will be healed. And by the spoken word, they will be healed. And to them there, God will open their understanding and there they will say, this is him. And that is why there are many of Brother Branham's group that are going to come. Now, of that group that is there, not all of them are the ones that are going to come up. There is a number of the chosen ones of the seventh age that are going in this end time to come up and receive the message. And notice that it was not a group that was in the whole trajectory of the good tidings of Gabriel. But nevertheless, God is going to give them the opportunity, which is the mercy of God for the last time. He is going to give them the opportunity to receive that which Brother Branham foreshadowed. And because they are so immersed in that message and they believe that message, when they see the fulfillment, It is no good for a person in this time to have all the message of Brother William and not see the fulfillment of what the forerunner was talking about that will be the fulfillment of the coming of the Lord. Then they become, they, chosen of God with prophetic insight and not these who have been in the message for years and saying that they have the message of Brother William and that they have the message of Brother Branham but they do not have the revelation and they have not seen the fulfillment of what Brother Branham had foreshadowed and they, since they know because since it was foreshadowed God is supposed to then fulfill it because when God takes away that disease of that tumor and takes away that disease, there they will see. But if this is what Brother Branham was forerunning, look at it there, fulfilled, that already gives them the right to obtain their eternal and glorified body. It gives them the right to the rapture because they will be receiving the one who will be bringing the rapture in faith, which they have been waiting for years. Did they not receive the Holy Spirit after later on there, the disciples of John? They had an opportunity and they received it. Not those who were of time and they said they were believers of the message of Moses. In other words, now that group of Brother Branham is a privileged group. More than many who are now who believe that because they have a new the messenger, our Brother William, and that they have the message of Brother William, it gives them the right to do the rapture. Well, let them not get ready because they are not going. Because if they do not receive what the Reverend William Branham foreshadowed, who is the forerunner of the second coming of the Lord, they are not going to receive the rapture in faith. Because the rapture in faith is in the one who is giving it, and in that one in whom God is fulfilling what Reverend William Branham foreshadowed. That is why when they, those of Brother Branham's group, see it, But if this very message that Brother Branham is speaking to us is the same thing that is being manifested in the tent, they are preaching the thunders. They are having all those miracles because somehow God will also open in a certain way their understanding through the miracles for them not for the group that is still in the neck which is what we were drawing here not for that group that's still there that the miracles are going to be done for them to believe rather they that is going to be like a testimony that what was being talked about was the pure truth 
But by them being locked up all that time because they went back when the Archangel Gabriel left, what they did was that they left to the seventh age. They did not stay there in that space, which is when the door above, the voice of Revelation 4 says, come up hither. That is where the going up is. The reality of that scripture is now, today. That group enters. Look where the harvest is done, that of the fish. The harvest is done. Imagine that part between the pyramid and the seventh age is the lake. And there is the catching of the fish. It is not done in the cornerstone. It is done in the gap. And those who stay there go backwards, jumping into the seventh age. Now, this is very important because in the time of the neck, that is where that group remains. After they see all the miracles, they come out and say, Open, Lord, open! Where are they knocking? They are not knocking from the seventh age to the cornerstone. They are knocking in... They come out, of course, they come out because then God is going to give them eternal life because they are going to give their lives for the message. Now... Those who have started to mock and speak against and all that, being foolish ones and being that they are written in the book of life, then after the millennium, their names will be erased. In other words, it will be erased before. What happens is that the spiritual death already takes place. Then the physical death is already after the millennium. In terms of soul, spirit, body, everything will disappear. But that group that is there among in the gap is the group that then, when knocking the door, because they come out seeing all the miracles and all. Wait, but this is the Lord. Lord, open for us. I do not know where you are from. See? If it's, I do not know where you're from, it is then that they are not in the seventh age. They are in the neck, where they were before, and they went backwards. And being in the neck, then they are not. It is a very delicate time, because it is the time when you had to decide quickly where you belonged. Either you went up, or you went back. And then, by going back, when they see the real thing, then they come out, they knock on the door, where they are automatically, in the air, in the neck, I do not know where you're from, then they are not turned back, because Satan's throne is Laodicea, and where is that throne? On earth, that is where Satan's throne comes to be open completely, on earth, in the seventh age. And all those people who are neither of the cornerstone nor of the seventh age are placed there. And that, for those people, is very, very sad. To be able to receive the message of Brother Branham and then receive the good tidings and not understanding the fulfillment of what was spoken by the forerunner and the good tidings from Brother William, from the Archangel Gabriel. But that, they will receive that first who are already inside the cornerstone and that small group of Brother Branham which they will enter through the door. They will recognize the ministry that God has in the midst of the people. And for sure, it will be when we are in that interlacing and approaching to the religious leader of the Hebrew people. When they see that, they are going to know that Moses and Elijah are there. Because it is the ministry that he, Brother Branham, foreshadowed that he said on page 30 of the ages, just as Peter and Paul brought the gospel to the Gentiles, Moses and Elijah, the ministries of Moses and Elijah, would take it back to the Jews, and the rapture will happen. In other words, they know that by seeing that approach, look, they saw. On the tablet that we took to them, Brother William said to me, look, the, show them that, look at how it is. 
And it's been six years now, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, seven years now. And they have not been awakened because all that was what was going to happen fully in the ministry of Moses and Elijah. That already reflected, represented what would be the Hebrew people receiving Christ in his second coming. And then Brother Branham's group is going to say, this is him. The same thing that the Hebrews say and will say. But that group of Brother Branham is going to receive and see what their father, Joseph's father, said would be the second coming of the Lord. That is why Brother William would say, as he said it, so it must come to pass. And they then, later, in a matter of no time, they are going to catch up because once you recognize everything that Reverend William Branham foreshadowed and you recognize the fulfillment, everything else opens up. Everything else becomes clear. And you did not need to be on a trajectory that many boast about saying, I have been in the message for 50 years. Well, what is the use of being 50, 60, 70 years in the message if you do not see, if you do not believe in the fulfillment of what Reverend William Branham foreshadowed? It was of no use to you. It is as if you were not living. It was better not to have been born then because what is the use of having all that time and having all the knowledge of the message of the letter but not seeing it, that letter, quickened, being fulfilled, it does no good to you. That is why those in Brother Branham's group, when they see that fulfillment, no, wait, this is the one that Brother Branham was foreshadowing. So that time of the door that will be closed soon in the cornerstone will have to do with Brother Branham's group and the 144,000. That is when the door of mercy will be closed, when those two groups come in, because the bride is already in. And whoever is still, who needs more light, well, let him hurry. Because once the Hebrew people and the group of Brother Branham are about to enter, and they enter all of, all of a sudden, This time of grace is a time left over. It is a time for the bride, for the chosen of God, for the wise ones, that they hurry to enter. Because once Brother Branham's group enters and the 144,000 enters, the door closes because they enter directly into the dispensation of the kingdom. The 144,000 then They are killed, persecuted, and killed in the Great Tribulation to then resurrect. After the three and a half years, they resurrect. Now, in order to resurrect, the same thing that happened with the Old Testament saints takes place that he went through and brought them. The same thing that will happen with the New Testament saints. He went through and brought them back. And the same thing will happen with the 144,000. He will have to seek them to bring them here. And that is something that we will be seeing how the 144,000 will resurrect because they will resurrect as the Old Testament saints resurrected and as the... New Testament saints will resurrect that the saints will hear the voice of the Son of God and will arise. In other words, there will be a call for them to resurrect as well. And they will be like the eunuchs during the millennium serving the bride. And that happens after the marriage supper of the Lamb, which are the three and a half years after the three and a half years of the Great Tribulations. And that is when they resurrect. And they are with eternal bodies, not the body that the elect will have, which is a body 
with all powers, as we say, the power window, power lock, and all the features that a modern car has. But it is a body that is eternal with the limitations that it does not have, that they will have, that the body of the elect has. But we are going to see that in the millennium, how it is that they will be bodies, that some will be able to do certain things and other bodies will not. But they will have eternal life, like the relatives. The relatives that we claim are going to have eternal life. They are going to have an eternal body, but perhaps not of that height of the glorified body of a chosen one, but it is eternal. It would not age. It would not have the problems that they have now, but it is a body for all eternity. So what good it is for a person to have the whole message and lose the great blessing of living eternally for rejecting the stone. You cannot reject the stone, nor can you shout at the stone, nor can you blaspheme the stone, for it is the stone that is bringing you the water of eternal life so that you may live eternally. That is why he said, speak to it better, speak to it, that you may see that it will give you that water. Speak to the rock and it will give you its water. Speaking to the first coming, he gave us the theophanic body. Then, speaking to the second coming, he will give us an eternal body. And even if the person does not belong to the elect, he will give him, by speaking to him, that eternal body to live for all eternity. That interlace of the seventh age, the gap, and the cornerstone, it is very important to understand it well and to see the characters that happened and that were present there in the first coming and to see the characters in the second coming because the same thing is repeated now. It is parallel in everything. Where are you today in the divine program? Are you in the seventh age? Are you in the neck part, the gap? Or are you already in the cornerstone? And I can give you a little help. If you have received the fulfillment of what the Reverend William Branham foreshadowed, you are in the cornerstone. If you are still searching and seeing that this must be God at work because you see a tent and you see a ministry there at work and you're praying to God and rather what you are doing is praying and asking God to help you, to enlighten you, well, you are about to pass the door. You are in the gap about to pass the door. But remember, hurry, because the 144,000 are very close who must enter before the Great Tribulation. Therefore, the Great Tribulation has not begun. The door is still open. And Brother Branham's group, which is also going to come in, that is another group of those who are there. And if you are saying, no, that is when Brother William comes, who is going to fulfill such thing, I do not believe this that is happening. It cannot be like this. I'm staying with the message because he said that we have to continue reviewing. Well, I'm going to give you a little help to tell you where you are. You are in the seventh age. You are where Satan, the devil, is ruling. That is why all those lying spirits, spirit of error, and all that are in that group that is in the seventh age. And they are blinded, both the ministers and those who follow them. That is why if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit, into the pit of the great tribulations. So all those people are in the seventh age. There you have a clear picture of where you are, so that then later on you will not say, I was not told, I was not told clearly. Is that the pastor told me such and such a thing? Well, that is what the media are for, the mechanisms. And that is why God is spreading the voice. 
which is the fastest way so that you, as a believer, hear the voice of God and not the voice of a man, not the voice of a minister who is not looking and seeing what Brother Branham's foreshadowed, seeing it being fulfilled, because the minister does not have the word. He does not have the revelation at that moment to guide you to the promised land of the new body. And since this is individual, you will have to watch over your transformation, your adoption, and the ministers, not because it is individual, then say, no, I wash my hands if he, he was supposed to see because this is individual. Well, know that you will be held accountable for the group that God gave you in your congregation. And if you were one of those who inhibited him and forbade him to see the fulfillment of the promises, well, blood will be demanded from your hands. And already we could speak another line of what is blood on the hands of a minister. Well, look at the three groups. And if we join the group that is still praying to God to enter, you see those ministries are fighting and will be working for the whole bride to be inside. And may God allow you, may God open the understanding of all those who have yet to see clearly the ministry of the coming of the Son of Man with His angels, so that they may enter quickly, and He will fight, He will work those ministries for the 144,000, and also for that group that is left of Brother Branham, that they come in, before the door closes because there on page 369 of the seals when it says that they had been in services like this they knew what was in store for them that is the group which would remain which is the seventh age that we return to the seventh age and they had been and heard all that those prophets had told them and they had made fun of it laughed at them made fun of them and the incarnated word had dropped forth why didn't they repent they couldn't it was too far then now notice why didn't they repent there is a repentance from unbelief. There is a repentance at this time because there is mercy. And if there is mercy, the bride, the elect, can repent. See? Why didn't they repent? They couldn't. It was too far then. So they know that the punishment, they heard it. If they had heard this, it means that they were there. They had sat in meetings like this. Do not think that these are people who have never heard the message. Look, there are people that many of them have been in the message for more than 50 years. That is why they have enough knowledge of what awaits those who do not receive the fulfillment of the divine promises, who do not receive the fulfillment of what the Reverend William Branham prophesied, promised, and foreshadowed and know about it and they know that the things of those prophets had predicted we are talking about something that is going to happen therefore we are prophesizing about what is going to happen if something is foretold it is something that you are anticipating of something that is going to happen that is why I'm telling you from now so that this scripture may have a faithful fulfillment in this same time. I am telling you, so you will not say later on, no, he didn't say it. Yes, I have said it. 
The thing is that they had rejected, they had spurned mercy for the last time, and when you spurn mercy, there's nothing left but judgment. Because those ministries come with mercy for the last time for the bride to take her away in the rapture. And the next thing that comes after the mercy is the judgment. Those who are going to receive the transformation and the rapture are those who are receiving mercy. And those who do not receive God's mercy for the last time, they will receive the divine judgment in the great tribulation. And we are speaking it today, Tuesday, July 18th of this year, 2023, so that later you can go to the messages and listen and read that it was spoken, that it was foretold, that what you are receiving now, in other words, when I say now, it is when at that time you no longer have the opportunity to enter, then you can say, no wonder I have to be now in the great tribulation. I was one of those who rejected God's mercy for the last time. And already there, you would be identified as the one who did not receive the ministries of Moses and Elijah in this end time. That dispensational interlace which we have been talking about these days, look at all that it entails and all that Brother Branham spoke that the third pool would be for the bride, for the foolish ones, and for the 144,000, for the lost. And all that entails a dispensational interlace and a new dispensation where whoever does not receive and pass to that new dispensation will not receive the benefits of that new dispensation, which we are living today in the present time, the dispensation of the kingdom. We could not say that we were in the dispensation of the kingdom when our brother William was here because he belonged, his good tidings and his message and everything to the dispensation of grace. Today, we are in the dispensation of the kingdom. That dispensational interlace which will be for the bride, for the foolish ones, for the lost, for the 144,000 also. It has been a privilege for me to be able to send these words of greetings to the missionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín and to all of the ministers and all the brethren today, Tuesday, July 18 of this year, 2023. And whoever is still with his eyes set on the promises of God and his eyes set on the third pool and still needs a little help, well, I will be asking God for you. May God continue to open your understanding, the scriptures, and soon enter fully into the cornerstone enter fully through the door because soon that door will be closed when the 144,000 come in and also that group of Brother Branham comes in the door will be closed so I will be praying for you so that God will bless you and help you so that before the door closes you will be inside if you are a chosen one you will enter as soon as possible. It has been a privilege for me to be able to send these words in the topic, the dispensational interlace. We can title this chat of this occasion as so. May God bless you and God keep you all.